Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual I'll start with some announcements. I have some really fun announcements. So the first thing, conference November 9th or 11th, that's not new, we've scheduled that a long time ago. Um, we have some amazing speakers, but one of our speakers, Dr. Anthony Lim, has decided to do an extra bonus lecture here at the office at two o'clock on Sunday. Um, and it's all included in your conference ticket price. You don't have to pay more for this. And he's gonna talk about the blue zones more than just diet. Why do the people in the blue zones live to be over 100 years old or a bigger concentration of them live to be over 100 years old? So you don't wanna miss this. If you've never heard Anthony Lim spelled L-I-M, um, just go online and Google him and he has a bunch of YouTube videos and I think you'll really like what you see and then you'll say oh my gosh I've got to go to Columbus and uh, be with these people this weekend so I can hear this guy speak so you'll have three opportunities to hear Anthony Dr. Anthony Lim one is when he speaks at the conference part of a panel discussion he will take place all the speakers will be in a panel discussion and then on Sunday afternoon here the other thing about this conference that's really unusual is that you will get a $500 certificate towards some of our programs you will actually get more back from us in credits than you spent with us to come. All right, so check it out, wellnessformhealth.com. Um, here's another uh, issue. Somebody sent this to me, uh, one of the viewers, and said Cleveland Clinic has this posted on its Health Essentials website. And the title is Why You Should No Longer Worry About Cholesterol in Food. Genetics Appear to Play a Stronger Role in Heart Disease. And so the reason why the person sent it was not because he or she was confused about this, but just to say, you know, the misinformation is everywhere and it is. Now I went to the uh, link that was included in the message and it includes quotes from Steve Nissen, who is chairman of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine, such as, quote, avoiding foods that are high in cholesterol won't affect your blood cholesterol. And he says that most of the cholesterol does not come from the food that people eat. Well, Dr. Nissen is known for making statements that are, um, how do I put this nicely? Not accurate, okay? So let me give you an example. Um, when Dr. Nissen spoke to the New York Times after the Mediterranean diet study came out that was so spectacular, they had to end it early, the results were amazing, they couldn't withhold the olive oil and the nuts from people because the results of eating the Mediterranean diet were so spectacular. So he says, this is what he told the, the New York Times. Now along comes this group and does a gigantic study in Spain that says you can eat a nicely balanced diet with fruits and vegetables and olive oil and lower heart disease by 30% and you can actually enjoy life. That's what he said. Now, Steve, Dr. Nissen, here's the thing. I don't think you ever read the study because here's what it really said. Actual results, 288 total events occurred. 96 in the Mediterranean diet group eating olive oil, 3.8%. 83 in the group eating nuts, 3.4%. 109 in the low fat group, 4.4%. What that means is that people eating liquid fat, oil, had a 0.6%, less than 1% reduction in, in uh, events and those eating nuts had a 1% reduction. So what Dr. Nissen was doing was using relative rather than absolute numbers to exaggerate the effect. Now, as if that isn't enough, I mean, and I look at this and I think, what could be going on here? Is it that Dr. Nissen does not know how to read research studies? This is really bad, right? He's head of the cardiology department at Cleveland Clinic. Or does he intend to deceive? Well, that's really bad too. I don't know how you look at it other than this is really bad. But then there's this small issue. The study was retracted due to methodological errors. So anyway, um, bottom line is you need to be informed because the Cleveland Clinic, people think, oh my gosh, everything that happens at the Cleveland Clinic is amazing and all the department chairs there are amazing. And there are some amazing people at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn would be one of those amazing people, but some of the rest of these people actually not so much. I wanna give you the straight story on cholesterol. And I think this study, I could give you a hundred of them, but I'm gonna use one study in particular that I think kind of says it all. Um, this study included 356,222 men, kind of a big number, I, I think, between the ages of 35 and 57. And it showed that serum cholesterol levels are directly related to the risk of coronary heart disease and CHE deaths. And the authors wrote, 
these data of high precision show that the relationship between cholesterol and coronary heart disease is not a threshold one with increased risk confined to the two, two highest quintiles, but rather a continuously graded one that powerfully affects risk for the great majority of middle-aged American men. And so cholesterol does matter, and dietary cholesterol does matter, and um, that is contrary to what the head of cardiology says at the Cleveland Clinic. So make sure you check out everything. And while we're on the subject of checking out everything, since 1868, medical professionals have told people that normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees or 37 degrees Celsius. The basis for this determination was one flawed study conducted 150 years ago. Carl Reinhold August Wunderlich, what a mouthful that is, a German physician, used data from 25,000 patients in making his claim that normal was 98.6 and that fever begins at 100.4. But Wunderlich used a thermometer that was calibrated higher than today's digital versions and measured temperature by placing the thermometer under the arm, which is a less reliable method of measuring temperature. A new study provides much more accurate information about normal body temperature. Dr. Jonathan Hausman, a rheumatologist in Boston, gathered 11,458 temperature readings in a crowdsourced research project using an iPhone app. The average normal temperature for the 329 healthy adults in this study was 97.7. While 97.7 may be normal based on averages, there are, there are many other things that influence body temperature that most people don't take into consideration. Temperatures for women are a little higher than for men, particularly during ovulation and pregnancy, and temperature varies throughout the day. So for example, if you wake up in the morning with a mildly elevated temperature, maybe you have a fever, maybe not. But while during the late afternoon, that same temperature would mean that it's probably normal as opposed to if you woke up with it. Exercise increases body temperature, as can taking certain drugs like antibiotics and antihistamines. The definition of normal is not the only myth about body temperature. There are also nuances in determining the definition of fever and when to do something about it. According to the Centers for Disease Control, a person is sick when he has a fever of 100.4 or higher, feels warm to the touch, or if there is a history of feeling feverish, or having one of several symptoms of illness, which include things like skin rash, difficulty breathing, persistent cough, persistent diarrhea or vomiting, and headache with stiff neck. The CDC appears to leave some wiggle room in determining who is and who is not sick since having a higher temperature is not listed as the only criteria. Fevers are one of the body's mechanisms for fighting infection because bacteria and viruses really don't like a warm environment. By itself, it's not a reason for concern or a reason to seek medical treatment unless temperature reaches 103 degrees Fahrenheit or 39.4 Celsius for adults. For children, the guidelines are different and depend on many things like symptoms and how long a temperature is sustained. While extra caution is advisable for particularly infants and toddlers, fevers also often clear themselves in children just like they do in adults. Dr. Hausman intends to continue his research and to expand it to determine whether drugs to reduce fever shorten or lengthen illness, and if fevers vary based on whether the infection is, the, the infection is bacterial, viral, or fungal. There remains a lot of controversy over whether or not lowering a fever is a good idea or not. A study including 72 children between 1 and 12 years of age and who had varicella infections showed that taking acetaminophen to lower fever did not alleviate symptoms and resulted in them remaining sicker longer than the kids who did not lower their fevers. And another double-blind placebo-controlled study of 60 healthy volunteers with rhinovirus showed that those who took aspirin or acetaminophen were sick for a longer period of time than those who took placebo. The researchers wrote that one of the reasons might be that the drugs suppress antibody response, which therefore results in the person staying sick for a longer period of time. So the bottom line is that temperature is like a lot of other markers of health. The results of measurement can mean different things in different people, and interpretation requires the use of clinical judgment. So um, I guess the message that comes loud and clear from all of this is that people have to be informed consumers because you just have to be, you know, th this, this temperature thing is everybody knows normal temperature is 98.6. Everybody knows that, right? I've come to the place where this is what I think. If the statement starts with everybody knows, assume that it's wrong because you're probably right about that <laughs> and start looking into it and find out what the truth is. 
All right, um, that's all for today. As usual, share this with friends and hit the uh, subscribe button um, up in the corner of your screen so that you can get these videos every single week. So pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.